Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Willie Treader, and I won opportunities knocking one week running. Here is the man who made it all possible, Huey Cream. <laughs> Thank you, thank you tremendously, ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful to be here. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, but who do who did you, the viewers, vote for on last week's show? And it is your vote that really counts. It really does. It really does, ladies and gentlemen. Well, in third place was that wonderful acrobatic olive stuffer from down there in Hampton, Ted Tingle. And in second place was that wonderful, wonderful Lincolnshire lion tamer, Claude Bottom. <laughs> But in first place, and coming through the door of opportunity right now, is the man with the educated throat, the man who sang a wonderful, very difficult to sing Marion McKeever's click song. Here he is coming through the door of opportunity now, Ivor Burles. <laughs> Since last week's show, has anything um, interesting, exciting happened to you at all? Uh, yes, Huey, the wife had twins, a boy uh, and a girl. I see. Anything, uh, anything else? No, just a boy and a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went right into that one, didn't I? Well, off you go now, Ivor. Ivor's going off now to sing the song that he sang last week, that very, very difficult to sing song with the, uh, the throat uh, noises, the Marion McKeever's click song. So we're going to hear now how Ivor clicks with all the girls. <laughs> what do you mean? Ah, <laughs> Uncle Bob Sharpie and the boys. Yeah. <laughs> so here is Ivor Burles with Marion McKeever's click song. Yes, Ivor Burles. Thank you tremendously, ladies and gentlemen, for the wonderful voice of Ivor Burles. Now, I have sitting beside me a very charming young lady. Do you mind if I ask your name? Frida. I beg your pardon, please speak up, please. Frida Carsey. <laughs> May I call you Frida? Yes, I'd like to. Yes. I do, I do. Yes, indeed. Tell me, Frida, do you, um, do, uh, what do you do for work? Uh, what sort of work do you do? I don't work. I'm a housewife. You don't work because you're a housewife? Well, I think the housewives do work. I think the housewives of this country work darn hard, don't you? Oh, come on, let's hear it for the housewife. They really work hard. I really do. No, I mean it. No, I really do. I mean it. I mean it. Now then, tell me, Frida, do you, um, do you have any hobbies? I collect buttons. You collect buttons? <laughs> That's most exciting. Hmm. Tell me, how many, how, how many do you have? 2,000. Oh, I've, uh, I've never collected buttons. Uh, bone ones and china ones? No. I've never collected buttons. Got a lot of metal ones. <laughs> I've never collected buttons. There's no flies on me. <laughs> no, but you can see where they've been. <laughs> I walked out into that one, didn't I? Tell me, Frida, who, who are you going to introduce us to? Fred and the Sophisticates. Uh, is Fred a, a friend of yours? No, he's my son-in-law. <laughs> we want to hear from them. We want to see them. And here they are, Fred and the Sophisticates, for whom opportunity is not. Saying we were 
On such a night as this is <laughs> with romantic every word you hear it's like a lover's kiss I'm It, ladies and gentlemen, for lovers of acrobatic dancing, don't forget to vote, vote, vote for Fred and the Sophisticates. Fred and the Sophisticates. I'll spell that for you. F-R-E-D. <laughs> I have beside me a very distinguished looking young man. May I ask your name, sir? Ivor Bunyan. Oh, have you? <laughs> no, that's my name. <laughs> uh, who are you going to introduce us to see? Uh, Peter Long. He's impressionist. I see. He does, uh, he does impersonation. All day and all night. Half the time his wife don't know who she's sleeping with. The other <laughs> night it was Richard Burton. This night they might have been married. <laughs> well, well, we want to we, we wanna see him. We want to hear him. And so for, Rich, uh, for Peter Long and partner, opportunity is not. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like you to imagine, if you will, that I'm throwing a big Hollywood party. And look who's over there. It's none other than Sydney Greenstreet and Peter Laurie. <coughs> no, no, wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, Peter, did you manage to get to Casablanca? <laughs> 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 No. <laughs> then you mean uh, that you didn't get uh, the maker film? <laughs> no. <laughs> mm. Life, Peter, is very cheap in Casablanca. And so you shall die with this pistol I have in my pocket. With a silencer on the end. <clears throat> How could you do a thing like this to me? I was your friend. That will teach you to cross the Maltese Falcon. I thank you, Peter Long and partners, for some really fine impersonations. They really were first rate, weren't they? And I think the uh, Bob Sharpie and the boys in the orchestra, they, they deserve a little uh, round of applause. Yeah, come on, let's see them. But some really fine orchestrations, I really wish. Them. That's enough. Don't give them too much, they want more money. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, it's salute time. <laughs> We are saluting Aberness, the city of Aberness up there in Boniscollum. And uh, I was up there recently myself with the uh, English ladies football team. And we, we yeah, come on then, yeah, all right, let, let's hear it for the ladies football team. Really, 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 really. And um, while I, I, I was up there, I visited the, the, the city of Aberness. And it is, one, it is a really a very, very beautiful and wonderful city to come from. And I'm proud and, and, and be privileged tonight to have uh, with us in the studio uh, one of the uh, councillors there, older woman, make peace. Hello there. <laughs> uh, tell me, um, older, older, alderman, older, older, uh, <laughs> I, I nearly called you alderman. Then I'm very sorry, older woman. I, I don't think we've, uh, we've, uh, have we on the. <laughs> I don't think we've... I don't think I've ever had a, 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 an older woman. We should try it sometime. They don't yell, they don't tell them, they're so grateful. <laughs> I was riding them out, didn't I? 
I tell you, would I be right in saying that uh, uh, ten years ago, Aberness was really little more than a village, just a little, very small uh, uh, village? Yeah, we had to widen the main road to put a white line down the centre. <laughs> yeah. Tell me, who, who are you going to introduce us to? Slim, the Whitmore and the Hurricanes. I see. And tell me, where did you, where did you first um, see, them, see them performing? At, at the Fancy Dress Ball that my husband organised, you know. He came as music at midnight, played the violin in his pyjamas, and the string broke. <laughs> he went out walking back with his hot cross well, we want to see them, we want to hear them. And so, ladies and gentlemen, for Slim Whitmore and the Thunderbirds, opportunities not. <laughs> Beats pound as they raced across the ground and the rattle of the wheels as they went round and round And he galloped into Market Street, his badge upon his chest His name was Herney, and he drove the fastest milk cart in the West Now Ernie loved a widow, a lady known as Sue She lived all alone in Lily Lane at number 22 They said she was too good for him, she was all be proud and chic but Ernie had his cocoa there three times every week. <laughs> they called him Ernie. Ernie! And he drove the fastest milk car in the West. She said she'd like to bathe in milk. He said, all right, sweetheart. And when he finished work that night, he loaded up the car. He said, do you want it pasteurized? Cause pasteurized is best. She says, Ernie, I'll be happy if it comes up to me chest. <laughs> that tickled Ernie. Drove the fastest milk car in the West. Hit him up! Right. Ah! Right. <laughs> now Ernie had a rival, an evil-looking man, called Two Ton Ted from Teddington, and he drove the baker's van. He tempted Sue with his treacle tarts and his tasty oatmeal bread, and when she saw the size of his hot meat pies, it very near turned her head. <laughs> He went on the mate with his Dundee cake and he said, if you treat me right, you'll have hot roll every morning and crumpets every night. <laughs> he knew when she seen his macaroons, he'd have his wicked way and all Ernie had to offer was a pint of milk a day. <laughs> Poor Ernie. Ernie! He drove the fastest milk car in the West. One lunchtime, Ted saw Ernie's awesome car outside her door. It drove him mad to see it was still there at half past four. And as he leapt down from his van, off blood to his veins did course, and he went across to Ernie's car, and he did not kick his horse. <laughs> his name was Trigger. Trigger! And he pulled the fastest milk car in the West. <laughs> now Ernie ran it into the street with his gold top in his hand. He said, you want to marry Susie, you fight for her like a man. Oh, why don't we play cards for her, he sneeringly replied. And just to make it interesting, we'll have a shilling on the side. <laughs> now Ernie dragged him from his van and beneath the blazing sun, they stood there face to face and Ted went for his bun. <laughs> but Ernie was too quick for him, things didn't go the way Ted planned, and a strawberry flavoured yoghurt sent it spinning <laughs> from his hand. <laughs> then soon she came between them and she tried to keep them apart, and a three-day-old rock cake for Ernie underneath it. <laughs> As he doubled up in agony, the concrete hardened crust of a stale meat pie caught him in the eye, and Ernie bit the dust. <laughs> for Ernie. Ernie! And he drove the fastest milk car in the West. <laughs> Ernie was only 68. <laughs> he didn't want to die. Now he's gone to make deliveries in that milk round in the sky where the customers are angels and ferocious dogs are banned and a milkman's life is full of fun in that fairy dairy land. But a woman's needs are manifold and Sue she married Ted. But strange things happened on their wedding night as they lay in their bed. Was that the rustle of the leaves or the creaking of the gate? or Ernie's ghostly gold tops a-rattling in their crate. <laughs> they won't forget Ernie! Ernie! Thank 
you, thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the exciting music of Slim Whitmore and the Hurricanes. And now it's Make Your Face Up time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we bring back the artist for you to see. And first of all, you heard the wonderful voice, that wonderful man with the magic throat who sang that very difficult Marion McKeever quick song. Here is Ivor Burles, who sang like this. Oh, eh, ah, oh, ah, ne, ah, oh. Next, we had that wonderful acrobatic dancing. One of the finest acrobatic dancing acts I think I've ever seen in my life. And uh, it was, of course, Fred and the Sophisticates who performed for us like this. Isn't it romantic? As Fred and the Sophisticates get a very well-deserved 27. We next hear from that wonderful impressionist, Peter Longing partner, who impressed us. but by no means least, ladies and gentlemen, we had the very, very wonderful, the very, very exciting music of Slim Whitmore and the Hurricanes, who sang for us excitingly like this. They called him Ernie. <laughs> Well, uh, the viewers here in the, in the studio, the audience in the studio, send Ivor Burles to the lead with a great 94. But um, if you remember, it is you, the viewers at home. It is your votes that, that, that really count. They really do so. Vote, vote, vote. Don't forget. And here's the address to send your votes to. It's Opportunities Knocking, 14A, The Hollies, Brickle Bottom Hurts. That you just once more. Here it is again. Get your pencils out. Opportunities knocking. 107 Peabody Buildings, Council Flats, Park Lane, W. So don't forget, folks. Vote, 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 because we do want your votes to help these people up the stairway to stardom. And we really uh, hope you're going to keep voting. And until we meet again, look after yourselves. Goodbye and God bless. <laughs>